Hello there and welcome to the Scourge of War series. Today we're playing Waterloo, the latest game inside the series, aptly released for the anniversary of the event. I'm your host, PPG Chu, and welcome to a preview video. And today we're taking a look at a, one of the introductory scenarios for the game. So, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you guys the menus for the game as they uh, they don't render very well on my recording program. But uh, this is a it, it, it's a it's a it's a real time strategy game. It, it's kind of in the similar vein as uh, the the Total War series, I guess, if you could make that comparison. And it is uh, a, a bit of a niche game. It doesn't look as great, but the scaling of the game is absolutely wonderful. Today we're playing one of the introductory missions of the game. Um, Waterloo here, in fact, features a nine-hour real-time, mind you, campaign. I'm, it's real-time, but it's adjustable for the entire Battle of Waterloo. It also features a nice selection of modifications, multiplayer and co-op, and, uh, well, regular and just absolutely and just overall a ton of different things that makes the game great so our objectives today is uh, we're playing the British it is 9 30 a.m. we are supposed to hold one of the foremost positions in the Battle of Waterloo the the, the Chateau de Gaumont or Hugh Gaumont is what I think it was uh, called in in uh, in real life if I pronounced that correctly it was a it was it was in Technically, I mean, just more or less a farm placement, really. But as it turns out, it was uh, it's a bit of a fortress in the end. Playing as the British, we have a limited uh, portion of Coldstream guards, uh, German infantry, and, and a few other things. And our objectives for today will be to defend the forests over here, pull back to the to the, to the chateau slash fortress, if you will, to uh, hopefully delay the impending uh, well French assault. And to give you guys a, a look into the scale of the game, the the map is massive. All of those troops are fully interactable with. Um, in the larger scenarios, in this one, unfortunately, there's not too much interaction, but that is all well and good and would you just look at that so yeah it's it's a total war game on steroids if you will where there's just an absolute ton of troops all of them are interactable uh, 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 like like that um, the downside is that it's not as great looking unfortunately and this game is scalable, meaning that currently we're playing on a one to one to six uh, ratio we get one of these little sprite dudes for six of the uh, the actual troops listed below um so how does this game work uh how do we really play it well we take command as one of the uh, the historical generals on the field how this works is that there's an actual command system inside the game and well you can take part in the battle as one of these people they don't have to be for example uh you know napoleon Bonaparte or um, the guy on the British side, I forgot his name for the moment right now, Wellington, there we go. Um, so, yeah, you can you can play this game at a, at a wide variety of different scales, where you can be the, the general commander of the army, or, uh, say for example, one brigade commander, as we are doing right now. So, what are we seeing here? We have a limited amount of troops, uh, the forest here automatically hides itself the closer we get. Our forces are deployed inside the uh, the forest right here, and our objective is to really just stall the, uh, the French armies for a while. So, this game is playable in the multiplayer in the sense that you can have multiple people taking command of these uh, little brigades and they can just kind of coordinate the battle as a, as a real team effort like that. Currently, what we're seeing here is that the British have uh, were the the British have already set up uh, set up their troops around this uh, this fortification, and the French are just starting their attack. They have some skirmishers in the front here, lining up over here, uh, putting some fire down onto our German auxiliary troops, if you will. We can take a look at the uh, the status of our uh, of our uh, troops over here. We have a few of these uh, Licht infantry. I, I believe these are hol hol or units from uh, from from Hull and just kind of attached to the British troops right here. Take a look at their experiences and all that. Pretty decent marksmen. And with that said, uh, we'll just go toe to toe with the uh, the line of French troops right here. So, like I said, a lot of the, the elements from this game kind of draws from things such as, say, for example, the Total War series, where it, it's it, it's close enough that you can make that comparison. Um, a lot of the action inside, inside this game is, uh, they're, they're very contextual, such as here. So what I can do is that I can kind of open up these right-clickable menus to bring our forces forward and to issue them commands from the sidebar over here. So we'll get our forces set up, lined up along the woods over here, and... Uh, really try to hold back the, the line of French forces, at least for now. 
And what we're seeing right here is that, so like I said before, the game is modeled onto, on a 1 to 6 scale, but that's uh, changeable within the game settings. But if you do, it, it kind of, um, it, it, it can be finicky at times. What we're seeing here is that on the bottom bar, uh, each and every single unit here has a morale, has a fatigue setting, has an amount of men inside the division, uh, has an amount of casualties they've taken so far, and an amount of casualties they've, they've uh, dished out on a wide variety of different commands along the side menu here. So, like I said again, our objectives are to really just kind of draw out the uh, the French. If needed, we'll try to fall back to the to the chateau to defend, and uh, really get things to to go from there. So the French here have uh, committed to a full scale assault from the looks of it. Our guys inside the forest here, um, you know what? We'll try and see whether or not we can hold them uh, back. Not for not not for the sake of dealing any damage right now, but for the sake of actually just kind of waiting them out. So throughout the battle, what we'll see here is that hopefully, hopefully if things go out uh, right, the, the AI commanders along our sidelines will start providing us with support. It's realistic in the sense that um, they, they try to model the different relationships and the different competencies of the different AI commanders as well, so they might not come to our aid out of uh, you know the internal rivalry of our forces here as well. So our guys on, on the front line here in the meantime will be uh, trading blows, they'll be taking damage as the battle goes on here. Uh, believe it or not, most of the damage comes from, oddly enough, the one thing that the AI, the enemy AI, doesn't control. Because again, the, AI is all, the, the enemy AI is also split up between these different kind of commanders. It will be mostly from the, from the bad cannon batteries over there shelling our troops. So, like I said, it's a 30 minute battle, um, it's kind of hard to read, but there's a there's a timer here on the very side, we're 6 minutes into the battle, and with that said, my goal for now is to really just kind of stall up the, uh, the, the line of French troops and just kind of hold them back for, uh, for the time being. How it works is that a lot of the things inside this game comes down to command and control from the uh, the perspective of the individual troops. They've they've done a lot of uh, of of uh, or they've put in a lot of effort trying to simulate those things. So for example, um, so as, as I've already said, there's a there's an overarching chain of command down to these units, but internally with these small divisions of units, there's also there's also different uh, things that the AI takes care of. So for example, um, on this very top corner of the screen here, we can take a look at what units the AI sees, what units the AI tries to kind of provide fire upon, you know, their primary target, secondary target, etc. like that. And furthermore, um, depending on how the battle goes, the AI will try to kind of flee on its own, try to reposition its troops and try to make attacking uh, moves by itself. So what I want to do here is that I want to try to stall the Brit or stall the French for about 10 minutes. We'll take a lot of casualties, but as soon as we flee back into the fortress, uh, we will be able to hold them for a long, uh, a long time. The main thing is that I want to hold these victory objectives, aka the big floating sign up here for as long as I can. And uh, if you notice, this is on not the fortification, but this is on the uh, the forest itself. So with that said, if all goes well, hopefully our meager amount of, uh, well, men here can just kind of hold up like this. So what I'm waiting for right now is that I want to have some troops in, uh, in reserve. Our morale is good, but we're taking a lot of damage. Um, ideally, we'll be able to hold out the enemy for the full amount of time. And we have some troops on the side here, which uh, I'm currently holding in reserve. We're, it, we're keeping a large amount of the French army at bay. And if we zoom far, far away, just to give you guys, an, again, a sense of the scale of the battle, we have all of this stuff right around here, including the vast array of British reserves, all cleverly hidden, just like in real life, behind this uh, hill right here. So this is not available for, uh, for, the, for the enemy to see. One of the neat things about the game is that if you'd uh, like to, you can you can play the game from the perspective of one of your your commanders, and what that effectively does is um, you you won't be able to move out the camera as far uh, away as uh, as this. Um, if you if you if you'd like, you have the setting of limiting you to express explicitly the person that you are playing as. So for example, if I did that, I would only be able to see, for example, something as small as uh, say like an area like this. Right, so we've kept the the British or the the French back for about nine minutes so far. Our losses are starting to rack, rack uh, 
starting to build up over here so you know what here's what i'm going to do i'm going to bring up our reserves we're going to try to delay uh, a retreat so what i'll do is i'll get our troops to go into a line formation we'll ask them to do that real fast as well we will get our general to pull back and we'll start doing the same thing but instead i'm going to get our guys to switch into a line formation and we're going to get them to pull back and again uh one of the things that the game prides itself upon is the the realism inside it so unlike total war games you uh if you have these blobs of line troops running around you can't get them to merge within each other and keep their formation really nicely uh there will be exceptions to this but overall we want to switch our guys into those line formations so that they can maneuver around each other real nicely Right, so the so we'll try to get our people to fall back to the uh, fortress over here to continue the defense. And it looks like these guys have uh, well, they've had enough. And as you see there, the 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 the, the commander of this formation has decided to uh, to actually rout. So he'll pull back. His morale is unfortunately not uh, not where it should be. But nevertheless, we'll get our people to make the uh, the withdrawal back to the fortification for now. So, it's a very in-depth game. But it's relatively simple in just uh, the amount of settings we have here. So, I'm leaving one troop to defend over here. And it has, uh, well, inside the, 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 the formation here, it has 134 people. Obviously, only a portion of those guys are represented by sprites. Just simply because uh, I think at the, at the the in the full campaign for the game, if you will, the nine-hour slog, you have roughly around 200,000 troops, and just simulating all of the guys is would be really, really difficult. So... Uh, these people should be pulling back in the meantime. There we go, now they're moving. We'll get them to to run back as well. And taking a look at the setup uh, bar over here, we have a few different options. We can get our forces here to lie down, which I'll get them to do so. And this can hide your troops if you'd like. We can get them to use volley fire as well. So you got to set it up properly. So you uh, get your guys set up in a line, get them set up, and uh, then switch it on, switch it off once they aim and then fire kind of things like that for the shock value of it really we also have a bottom line of uh, a few different statuses such as uh, well we're on the high ground and we're on defensive ground so we get a uh, bonus for both but yikes that was a a nice shell managed to flatten just the middle of our lines over there so again it is uh well yeah quite the uh quite the game for these things right over here Unfortunately, the controls aren't perfect in the sense that sometimes it is uh, just difficult to get the AI to do exactly what I want. So, for example, over here, uh, the commander of uh, one of the skirmish detachments, from the looks of it, decided to climb off of these defensive walls over here uh, along the, the edge of the chateau to enter the fight, which is exactly not the type of thing I wanted to do. And if I remember correctly, we can pray, yeah, we can perhaps pull up some uh, some statistics about the skills and you know the the type of uh, commander they have. So Lieutenant William, uh, or not William, we have uh, James McDowell over here. So yeah. And again. We want our people to pull back into the fortress, so I think we just issue them overarching orders like that. And then afterwards, what we can do is that we can take a look at the different uh, forces stocked uh, in here, what they're doing, and what uh, well, how well the how how well the the fortress is holding up. So oddly enough, inside this game, you you can't actually assault these structures. The reason being is that historically, uh, this being again one of the major uh, points inside the battle historically, only seventy nine French troops or or were in this location uh, at one particular time. That was the maximum people that uh, that managed to enter this fortification. Just given the fact that it was really really strong like that. So, unfortunately, I'm having some trouble getting the AI to properly join into the, or get into the structure. But once they enter, they'll be part of the garrison here. And the garrison's kind of abstracted in the sense that um, it really just kind of does whatever. 
uh, the top floating icon here says that at maximum destruction can hold a whopping 300,000 units. That's the equivalent of practically, uh, you know, half the field in, in a total war game. And afterwards, now, unfortunately, what happens is that structure combat isn't modeled all too terribly well in the sense that all it is really is... Uh, is a group of units outside firing at the structure and some smoke clouds you know puffing away along the edge of the walls here on the structure but nevertheless um, that's just kind of how they how they've set it up given the limitations of the uh, the engine here and again my troops are being real finicky about how they flee so you know what we can use a few different orders here We've got column, we've got a marching formation, or a, a maneuver formation, we've got the line for fighting. Uh, we can order people to use roads, to double quick run, to force moves if you want to do, or to take charge from the AI uh, commander. Um, there's also, uh, the game comes with a modification that enhances what you can do here. It has a lot of formations and a lot of different things you can do, but that's more so for um, uh, the, the advanced player there. But nevertheless, it's nice that they've added the option for that. So taking a look at the Brit or taking a look at the French lines, it looks like they've deployed some more. Or they've, they've, they've been moving up the skirmishers over here. They have a single um, a portion of their line battalion, kind of putting down some fire onto our structure. So as you can see, we can't see what the uh, the the enemy units are doing. You know what their full mass is, uh, what their casualties are, and much like in real life, you, you just kind of have to observe those by uh, you know by by telescope in reality. But in this, we have the the added luxury of having the floating camera. Um, likewise, you you can you can only tell partial information about the the troops that you don't control. So for example, the gun batteries over here and the. Uh, the, the British troops kept in reserve over there. So in due time, um, later on down along the front, maybe those guys will provide a support. But for now, uh, as the battle goes on, as you can see, we've kind of lost control of this victory point right over here. It's it's current. It's currently in in the contested state, so we haven't fully lost it. But by no means are we in ownership of it. We're of course in ownership of the uh, the the chateau over here, which is all well and good. And with any luck here, we'll have another unit, another 109 people to man the, the fixtures up here. So that'll be very, very all and good. Taking a look at the body count for the French over here, they seem to be uh, repositioning their troops. Taking minor casualties along the front here. And in the meantime, our structure is just raining down uh, some some fire onto, uh, onto their, their forces right there. Let's take a look at these guys. They are engaged. They they so there's uh there's quite a few different terrain types inside the game. Currently, they know that there there's a wall here. It's not necessarily part of the fortress in itself, but it's a, it's a, it's a portion of it. And what I'd like them to do is I'd like them to reposition themselves along this wall. So they'll gradually do that. Hopefully, if the if the commander here doesn't have any you know quarrels with that, and in the meantime, some of these forces will just try to. Uh, pepper the French skirmish line over there with their weapons. It's a very interesting game. This being a introductory scenario, we don't necessarily see the full scale of it, but in a uh, full match, uh, in particular a multiplayer match, what would be particularly interesting would be to see, uh, uh, for example, different commanders, different multiplayer commanders all uh, commanding these lines. So for example here, um, this this person right over here, I don't know if you can tell the exact person I'm highlighting, he answers to, uh, from the looks of it, this commander, this commander uh, so happens to command from the looks of it a lot of the cavalry units back here. Um, for example, someone else might command the, uh, the artillery uh, the artillery lines over here up on top of the ridge. Um, somebody else commanding, of course, a portion of the infantry and all in sync. I mean, you can send different couriers to different commanders if you'd like that element of uh, realism where, you know, personally, I would probably use TeamSpeak or something along the lines of that to convey messages. And overall, it's, uh, it's a, it, it can be a wonderful uh, cooperative experience like that, especially if you manage to find, I think, I want to say 32 people at max on, or you know, 16 on both sides doing exactly that. So let's see how how it is. 
Right, and I mean, there's a there's an element of simulation to what these guys are actually doing. So with that said, as as you may have noticed, the the sprites don't necessarily represent what uh, what the forces are doing at one particular time. But what we're seeing here is that these guys over here, portion of the Coldstream Guards, are positioned nicely against the French over there. You have some foliage to the front, which might slow them down. Um, they're at half ammunition, half fatigue. They have extremely, extremely high marksmanship, so hopefully uh, they'll be able to pick off a few other f the French skirmishers over here. And it looks like the French uh, casualties are mounting towards the front. And you've got the wonderful barrage of, uh, well, fire here, unfortunately not very well modeled, some smoke and fire. Coming from the fact that, uh, again, um, a lot of the damage to these structures were due to the, uh, the, 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 the amount of bombardment coming from the French cannons. So, yeah, they've got that uh, working. Unfortunately, it's not exactly, you know, the, the, the most prettiest type of thing out there, but again, for the sake of scale, uh, they've, they've, they've gone for it there. And the, and, and the other thing being that it's a, it's, it's a fairly older engine. Uh, taking a look at the fortress over here, let's see uh, the stats behind it. So we have 800 men garrisoned in here, we have uh, you know 200 losses coming from the retreat and all that, dealing 77 em enemy casualties, but nevertheless we're holding this for a lot of uh, uh, grade if you will over here, grade being the measure of how well we're doing uh, during the battle here, and it's a mixture of holding positions for a time and uh, dishing out enemy losses. So likely what we're uh, expected to see over here is our losses will go up by a very minor amount, but uh, the amount that we dish out will go up by a lot. Hopefully, at least. Taking a look at the firing lines over here, so looks like the French uh, second were uh, what is this second battalion inside the brigade over here. They're about seventy nine yards away from the closest uh, closest target, which would be our troops uh, inside the, the fortress. So muskets typically fire at, uh, at or they're effective at 100 yards, so they're, they're well within our weapons range, which is very, very good. And with that said, we'll just wait until casualties mount up over here. The battle just kind of rages on, going from here. It looks like these people have decided to pull back for whatever reason, despite dishing out 27 casualties while it's taking none of their own. And that just kind of gives you an idea of how strong these wall uh, these walls are. I'm going to give them an alternative order. I'm going to get them to march back to the walls, get them to go into a line formation. I'm going to get them to force move, and I'm going to get them to run there for now really want to uh, bring up some more firepower over here. And how are we doing? Yikes, we're taking some losses from the Coldstream Guards, but then again, they see a massed wave of uh, French troops to their front. And right, let's just see. Can we get these people to move forward? There we go. So again, quite a nice uh, simulator for uh, for the Battle of Waterloo here. And the people who make the series, they make a nice uh, variety of the, these uh, games, again, within the same series. They've made uh, one for the, uh, for, or they've made a, they've made a line of these games for, for, for the Civil War, the American Civil War um, as well. So let's see if we can get these. Uh, skirmishers over here. Are these guys skirmishers? No, they, they seem to be just regular line infantry. Either way, we'll try to get them to uh, get on top of the walls here. They're slightly out of range, but I mean, nevertheless, they can still fire upon their enemies, so we'll get them to do so. And here, I mean, if we click on them, we have a few different orders. We could get them to turn. Uh, we could get them to do quite a few different things here. So there's a nice kind of a contextual menu for us to uh, to use. There we go. The French are closing in. They're 100 yards out now. They're starting to deploy their uh, their main forces. And what do we see here? What are these guys? Okay, so another standard battalion. Slightly different uniform though. And oh, already 
start, they're starting to take some losses already. Yeah, so wonderful battlefield scene. All we had to do is just to uh, hold off the British or hold off the French here. I've been playing this game a lot from the French perspective, so that's kind of why I keep saying uh, saying things from the enemy perspective. All we have to do here is to just hold them off for another seven or so minutes, and that'll be the end of that. Let's see. Doesn't look like our uh, AI friendlies are doing all too much there. So that's rather unfortunate. And there you go. You have some, um, you have some of the shells exploding overhead along the forest there. So that should do some damage at least. That should be uh, pretty good if it hits the trees up here. If the cannon fire hits there. It should scatter all of the, uh, yeah, the it should it should scatter shrapnel all along whatever is around them really. Okay. Oh, that's right. Another thing with this, uh, with, with these titles, is that given the the kind of the pacing of the uh, the battles, right? Um, I think what the French are doing here is that uh, they can only engage us with two of their units. I mean, three at max. It really depends on how close they want to get to our lines. And they're the, okay. So obviously, they're trying to put down a line of fire. In the meantime, they're trying to build a, uh, a, a defensive line for themselves as well here from the looks of it. And another thing along the sides of it, trying to protect their flanks and all, so that if anything happens, um, and, and the other thing is that, I mean, your forces maneuver really, really slowly, right? So with that said, they, yeah, they seem to be repositioning here. Yeah, and that cannon fire builds up fast. Starting to see a lot more losses on the French. Hopefully, uh, a, wow, yeah, a lots of their forces being whittled down just by the just by the uh, the strength of these positions. Taking a look at the the fortress of uh, Hugomo over here, not that much in terms of four damage, but thirty minutes in, the structure's already at from the looks of it eighty percent health, um, almost filled to the brim with uh, forces over here laying down very very deadly barrage primarily on this unit from the looks of it how are we doing here ah so these guys are starting to take a small amount of damage but nevertheless they're they're dishing out a decent amount as well I'll see if I can truly get these forces to act actually stand up on top of the walls here. But no, it doesn't look like I can. So I think next time we'll check out a similar scenario. Um, next time we'll check out a scenario from the French where we assault uh, the other side of the map, so if this is the, the right flank for the British, we'll take a look at the left flank for, for the British at 12.30, if not 12 o'clock, where we get to make an assault as the French. And inside that scenario, I think we'll be able to take a look at some more aspects of the, uh, the, the, the fighting in open terrain, as well as the fighting on buildings. And especially, um, I noticed that inside this scenario, the, the, the friendly... Uh, commanders, adjacent commanders over here. They don't do too much, but be rest assured, in the uh, the next scenario, they do do a lot more than what's shown here. Right, so about 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. 
Looks like our cannons are getting in here from uh, from the side, no doubt. Pummeling a lot of their their second line of troops, probably most likely the skirmishers as well. Yeah, so their main line there will uh, will hold for now. In the meantime, our guys are focusing fire on the side line of uh, forces over here. Let's take a look. Oh my, would you look at that? The front line of where, like, yeah, the first line inside this, uh, this brigade is gone. Ah, there we go. Managed to route these, uh, yeah, this, this particular battalion. And there you go. Yeah, it's maneuvering in the second one. These, these troops will probably come back and fight later on during the day, perhaps in the afternoon once they've, uh, rallied and gotten some rest. Second line's coming in. Their general is uh, leading the the advance over here. And would you look at that? So timed out. Um, we managed to win the battle for the day. And I'll go. So um, that will be it for the first episode here in the Battle of Waterloo. Where yeah, um, we'll continue our look into the game later on from the perspective of the French at 12 p.m. where we get to make an assault. So if you like this video and uh, well, you'd like to see more about this game and also similar content, be sure to like and subscribe as we will be posting uh, the battle for for Papaluet and. Um, the, well, the, the, the left flank, the left British flank uh, shortly after. So I'll see you guys then.